Welcome to the Bible in a Year with Manna. I'm your host, Uriah Beagle, and with me today is Trefina Beagle. Join us as we experience God's Word together and grow in our relationship with Him. Today we'll be reading from the Berean Standard Bible. The reading plan we're following is the One Year Chronological Bible. Today is day number 45, and we'll be reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 39, verses 32 through 43, Exodus chapter 40, and Numbers chapter 9, verses 15 through 23. Let's dive in. Exodus chapter 39, starting in verse 32. So all the work for the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, was completed. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent with all its furnishings, its clasps, its frames, its crossbars, and its posts and bases. The covering of ram skins dyed red, the covering of fine leather, and the veil of the covering. The ark of the testimony with its poles and the mercy seat, the table with all its utensils and the bread of the presence. The pure gold lampstand with its row of lamps and all its utensils, as well as the oil for the light. The gold altar, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, and the curtain for the entrance to the tent. The bronze altar with its bronze grating, its poles, and all its utensils. The basin with its stand. The curtains of the courtyard with its posts and bases. The curtain for the gate of the courtyard, its ropes and tent pegs, and all the equipment for the service of the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. And the woven garments for the ministry in the sanctuary, both the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons to serve as priests. The Israelites had done all the work just as the Lord had commanded Moses. And Moses inspected all the work and saw that they had accomplished it just as the Lord had commanded. So Moses blessed them. Exodus 40. Then the Lord said to Moses, On the first day of the month you are to set up the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Put the ark of the testimony in it and screen off the ark with the veil. Then bring in the table and set out its arrangement. Bring in the lampstand as well and set up its lamps. Place the gold altar of incense in front of the Ark of the Testimony and hang the curtain at the entrance to the tabernacle. Place the altar of burnt offering in front of the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. And place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Set up the surrounding courtyard and hang the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it, consecrate it along with its furnishings, and it shall be holy. Anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, consecrate the altar, and it shall be most holy. Anoint the basin and its stand and consecrate them. Then bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of meeting and wash them with water. And you are to clothe Aaron with the holy garments, anoint him, and consecrate him, so that he may serve me as a priest. Bring his sons forward and clothe them with tunics. Anoint them just as you anointed their father, so that they may also serve me as priests. Their anointing will qualify them for a permanent priesthood throughout their generations. Moses did everything just as the Lord had commanded him. So the tabernacle was set up for the first day of the month of the second year. When Moses set up the tabernacle, he laid its bases, positioned its frames, inserted its crossbars, and set up its posts. Then he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering over the tent, just as the Lord had commanded him. Moses took the testimony and placed it in the ark, attaching the poles to the ark, and set the mercy seat atop the ark. Then he brought the ark to the tabernacle, put up the veil for the screen, and shielded off the ark for the testimony, just as the Lord had commanded him. Moses placed the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle outside the veil. He arranged the bread on it before the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded him. He also placed the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle and set up the lamps before the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded him. Moses placed the gold altar in the tent of meeting in front of the veil, and he burnt fragrant incense on it, just as the Lord had commanded him. Then he put up the curtain at the entrance to the tabernacle. He placed the altar of burnt offering near the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and offered on it the burnt offering and the grain offering, just as the Lord had commanded him. 
He placed the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing. And from it, Moses, Aaron, and his sons washed their hands and feet. They washed whenever they entered the tent of meeting or approached the altar, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. And Moses set up the courtyard around the tabernacle and the altar, and he hung the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard. So Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was unable to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was lifted from above the tabernacle, the Israelites would set out through all their stages of their journey. If the cloud was not lifted, they would not set out until the day it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel through all their journeys. Numbers chapter 9, starting in verse 15. On the day that the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, was set up, the cloud covered it and appeared like fire above the tabernacle from evening until morning. It remained that way continually. The cloud would cover the tabernacle by day, and at night it would appear like fire. Whenever the cloud was lifted from above the tent, the Israelites would set out, and wherever the cloud settled, there the Israelites would camp. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at the Lord's command, they camped. As long as the cloud remained over the tabernacle, they remained encamped. Even when the cloud lingered over the tabernacle for many days, the Israelites kept the Lord's charge and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud remained over the tabernacle for only a few days, and they would camp at the Lord's command and set out at the Lord's command. Sometimes the cloud remained only from evening until morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they would set out. Whether it was by day or by night, when the cloud was taken up, they would set out. When the cloud lingered for two days, a month, or longer, the Israelites camped and did not set out as long as the cloud remained over the tabernacle. But when it was lifted, they would set out. They camped at the Lord's command, and they set out at the Lord's command. They carried out the Lord's charge according to His commands through Moses. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your guidance and your instruction that you provided to past generations. We ask that you would show us your guidance and your instruction to us through the reading of your word and through gaining a better understanding of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Day 45, we have the Israelites following God's instruction. It's repeated a bunch of times throughout here that it was done exactly as it was commanded. Mm Mm-hmm. And we see some of the interesting concepts in here of disguising God's presence and keeping man away from God that we just don't have to deal with these days because Jesus has cleansed us of our unrighteousness. But back then, the incense, like, does God really need to smell incense or is it making it more appealing for him to be around us? Like, think about how much you would have stunk walking around in the desert. Mm. For years, there's no deodorant invented yet. <laughs> so when you walk in there, God's like, dang, these guys smell. <laughs> but instead, you've got this lovely incense. I'm like, oh, okay, they're more tolerable to be <laughs> around. But today we got Jesus that is the, the deodorant of God, making us be <laughs> pleasing in the presence of the Lord. Yeah, he cleaned us. Of our, he's washed us. Again, just like the wash basin that would have helped them to also alleviate the dirt, the grime of being out in the desert, wandering around out in the wastes. And these these people were consecrated, and then they consecrated the temple, the place where they would worship the Lord. If you ever talk to Riley, he says he goes up and down the halls of the church praying over it, Mm. praying for the different ministries and the things. So this idea continues even into modern practice. Love that. Yeah, so Aaron and his sons were brought into this permanent priesthood, being cleansed of their sins and were washed by Moses. Yes, so even though he had helped make the calf, God still forgave him and brought him into the promise, which is, again, another analogy of how Jesus continually offers atonement for everything we have done. Well, he offered it one time. But it is a, a continuous, your past, present, future mistakes were all washed by the blood of the Lamb. But back in the Old Testament, these even though they were the permanent priests and they were brought into that covenant, 
They still had to wash themselves. They still had to offer sacrifices. I think it's important to note here, too, that people think about themselves by their sin, but that's not how God calls you. He calls you by your name. So it doesn't matter what your sin is. Nothing is too great for God to forgive you for and to wash you of. Amen. And the ark here was shielded, not from Moses, but he had to shield it from the other priests. He had to put a veil around it. And the glory of the Lord came into the tabernacle. I think that's a important part of the story here is that now God has a dwelling place amongst the Israelites. Mm -hmm. He has a structure that they have dedicated to him. He didn't need this temple as a reminder to them because now they could see the glory of the Lord physically amongst them just like they had wanted the calf how they had wanted objects of worship. So I think this is an example of God accommodating the brokenness of the Israelites by giving them a place to see his physical presence. They didn't need this back in the days of Abraham and Isaac, but now in his attempts to help the people stay true and keep worshiping God, I feel like that's part of why this became more of a practice. It also established a place and a way to worship, but like, why did God need to establish this place of worship? I think it's because he meets us where we're at. So these people were accustomed to seeing idols or seeing things in front of them, having a tangible form. And we, some people still struggle with that, knowing that God is there, but I can't see him. Or how is he here? How is he working? How is he moving? But he's always there. We don't need to have a physical like depiction of God right with us. It just, we know him. We feel him. You can see him move in your life. You, he's just there. He's everywhere. And now he came down to them in this cloud as a physical manifestation, the cloud and the fire, and it would be around the temple or it would pull up into the sky and be like, hey, we're going that way. Start moving and you'd be like, okay, pack up the camp, let's go, let's follow the Lord. And it, it's an incredible physical descriptor and physical attribute to how you're supposed to follow God. If God tells you your place is here in whether you're with us in Newport News and God saying, hey, your ministry is here in Newport News. But if he picks up from Newport News and says, hey, Uriah, it's time to go wherever I'm telling you to go. You need to go. Yeah, you don't question. You obey first and you you listen. You you consider all that later. The first thing you do is obey and everything will be revealed in God's time. Yeah, and just like the Israelites followed God's commands here. Uh, history would be a little bit different if they would have followed them the entire way through. But again, back to the warning from the last reading, they will eventually stray from this. There's a spoiler there. The land of Canaan will uh, have temptations that they don't all resist. But as you move forward in your life, try and remember to keep focused on where is that cloud moving today? Where is that cloud today? Do you need to sit and worship with God today? Or do you need to pick up and follow God where he's leading you? I agree. I think it's also cool to note um, when you talked about having that place, it, there might be a place that you need to create to, to make space, to make a place for God, to specifically invite him in to your home, to your family, to your relationships. I think it'll prove to be worth it. Yeah, even a place free of distractions so that you can just spend time with God. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to being with you tomorrow for day 46 of the Bible in a Year with Manna.